Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make this really easy platform bed frame as well as this gorgeous headboard. I hope that you guys are excited for today's video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new, and I also want to say a big thanks to Medea for sponsoring today's video and keeping me cool while I worked on today's DIY projects. I will tell you more about them later on in the video. So first we are going to be making the headboard. You're going to need a few supplies for this. I'm using MDF board which is cut to 63 by 45 inches, some polyfill project fleece, you can pick that up at your local store, as well as some quilt batting spray. It's basically adhesive spray and I'm spraying that down on the piece of board. That way the polyfill will stick to that and it won't move on me. Now depending on your thickness of polyfill, you may only have one layer. I had two, so I went ahead and sprayed that in between the layers. That way it would not move on me. Then you're going to go ahead and take your headboard and flip that over. Then you're going to spray the adhesive down the sides and getting that all stuck on. Now I'm going to be using my electric staple gun and some shorter staples here and I'm just going to go all the way down the edge of my polyfill. Now I'm going to be taking 1x4s by 45 in length and these are actually scrap pieces from the um, bed frame that I'll be showing you how to make so you don't have to buy anything extra for this. Now for this, I am going to be spraying again that spray adhesive and then sticking on the polyfill just like we did the headboard. Again, I'm just repeating the same process to, that I did to the headboard to the side rails here and I'm just connecting the two pieces together. I ended up folding the ends just kind of like a present and then stapling those down. So now that the first part is done, the fun part begins. I'm going to be taking my material. I purchased this from Joann's and it was on sale and it's just gorgeous. You can use whatever material that you would like. You're going to want to make sure your material is straight, basically squared up with your uh, headboard. And I'm just applying that spray adhesive to first hold it down. And then I'm taking my staple gun with slightly longer staples in it, going all the way down one side, just pulling it tight. And for the corners, you'll just want to cut off any excess and then you'll fold that over into a 90 degree angle basically. And then you're going to cut off all that extra material and save it and then basically repeat the same process, making sure you pull nice and tight. So again, we're going to be repeating this for the end rails here. Now make sure to give yourself just a little bit extra material than you did the polyfill because it's going to make your life just a little bit simpler when you're going to be stapling this to the end of the wood. I, again, I used the spray adhesive to lock that material down and did that to both sides. And then what you're going to do next is actually take the material and kind of fold it over on itself and then you're going to staple it to the small little edge. You don't have much room to work with. So it's a little bit tricky, but just get it in there and try to keep it as even as possible. Again, pulling tight the same way you did to the headboard. Then I'm going to be taking these decorative nails here and adding those in. This is optional. I am so happy I did it though. They were $1.77 and um, I used three packs of them to do the two rails. Now you can draw a line on. I did not. I spaced mine about an inch or so apart and then just kind of work them in. You may not get it exactly straight. It's okay. You won't be able to tell from far away, but I did that to the both of the rails. And then once those were done, they just looked so pretty. I ended up attaching these um, brackets to them so that I could attach the end rails to the headboard itself. These were not the ones I wanted. The store was actually out of the T brackets or the thicker brackets that I originally wanted. So I would suggest using those over these skinny ones. Then I took these hanging brackets and attached these one on each end. Make sure you put them at the same height. That way when you go to hang your headboard on the wall, it'll be level. 
I absolutely love the way it turned out and the nail heads just make it complete. If you are excited to make one, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And before I show you how to make the platform bed frame, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Medea, who sent me this portable AC unit that not only can cool a 100 square foot room, but it has a built-in fan and dehumidifier. Everything you need comes in the Medea portable AC unit box, directions, installation accessories, which include the clip-on drain hose measuring 59 inches when extended, the attachment for venting the unit through your wall, the foam window seals, the adjustable window bracket which fits openings from 26 and a half inches to 49 inches in length and works with both hung and sliding windows. It has a stick on bracket to hold the cord, a window lock and remote control with batteries. Moving the Medea AC unit around is easy and it requires no heavy lifting because it's on wheels. Installation is easy. To install the included window bracket in your existing window, simply use the included pin to hold the size, then add the airtight foam strips to keep it locked in the hot air out. You can even leave out using the foam if you will be frequently moving the whole AC unit slash window attachment into various rooms. Connect one brown bracket to the window, then connect the drainage hose to the window bracket extending it however far you need, and then connect the other round clip to connect the hose to the Medea AC unit. Then if needed, you can shorten the air hose again if you need to, or extend it depending on where you want it to move in your room. And the device will tell you when the air filter that is on the side of the unit needs to be changed as well. You can change the setting on your device with a push of a button. You can choose which function you want it to do, and the AC ranges from 62 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also choose the dehumidifier or the fan setting. This particular easy cool model comes with a remote control and is even Wi-Fi and Alexa enabled. Staying cool this summer is easier than ever. You can tell Alexa to start cooling off Pacific Room, like your room before you get in bed, or you can use your Medea smartphone app to control your device from almost anywhere at home or on the go. Special thanks to Medea for partnering with me for today's video and also offering my viewers 15% off their orders using the promo code here, which is good through August 1st. I will leave the link in the description box below and hopefully you'll be able to pick one up to stay cool this summer. I know for us, we are enjoying having this portable AC unit. So now for the bed frame, this is so easy. It doesn't require really any tools at all besides an impact driver or a drill. And don't worry if you don't have a saw at home, you can have the hardware store cut all your boards for you. This works for any size bed that you will be doing. I'm going to be using the impact driver, these L brackets, a measuring tape, and then three different sizes of screws. Right now I'm just laying out the bed frame to start with so you guys can see visually how it's going to look. It's a simple rectangle. You're going to have the head and the footboard are the same size. Then you're going to have five boards, which is basically the rails on the inside and the outside um, are going to be all the same size. And then you're going to have the legs and then the slats that are going to hold your mattress up. That'll be the same size. I'll go over all the cuts with you in a minute. Right now, I am just using my saw to make my cuts. All the legs, I am making 17 inches and in long, and these are four by fours. And I got one uh, four by four by 10 in feet because I'm going to need five feet for this. Four for the outside and one for the middle support. The next step is to sand down your boards. Make sure you do every single side. You want this nice and smooth. I'm using 80 grit, then 220 grit. You can use whatever you would like. Um, I'm also going to be painting mine, but you could also stain it. Just make sure you don't skip this step. It is very necessary because you want a nice smooth finish. And now for all the measurements that you will need for your boards, go ahead and take a screenshot of this. That way you know what you need. I chose longer boards. That way I could get um, a couple boards out of each one to save myself a little bit of money. You do whatever works for you. The next step is to attach the legs. Now, 
Um, you could just simply line this up so it's flush, but I would suggest at least leaving the 1x4 on the bottom because that's going to be what your bed is resting on. What I'm doing is putting the 2x4, which is going to be the bed support. Then I have the 1x4 that's going to be sitting on top of that. Then I took two more 1x4s and layered them on because I want my bed to sit in just a little bit. And I'm doing this upside down, obviously. Then I'm taking my three and a half inch wood screws here and screwing those all the way in. You, of course, can pre-drill if you want to. These screws don't require it. So once you get that in, do the other side as well. The impact driver makes this super easy um, and it doesn't strip anything out. Then I put two more um, connecting the two by six to the other two by six. Um, you can fill these holes if you'd like to. I don't. I leave them bare. That way if I need to take the bed apart, I can. Now I'm going to repeat the process on all the other legs. And again, you can adjust the height of your leg if you want to. And you don't have to use 2x6s either. You could use 2x8s or 2x10s depending on how um, wide and tall you want your bed rails to be. Now for the middle um, bed support, I am going to be layering these backwards. So I put the 1x4s on the bottom and then I put the 2x4 on top because I'm going to be attaching these L brackets that I got, a uh, rail here. And then I will take the other four and put two on each side of the 80 inch side rails to support that other 2x4 that will be going on those ends. They sell these in different thicknesses and sizes, so just choose one accordingly. Um, I like the thicker ones because it's going to be supporting you as you sleep and everything. You can see the other two side ones that I attached to there by my feet. But this is the way I've made our king size bed and it's worked wonderful for the last seven years. We haven't had any problems with it, so I know that it will work for you. So now I'm going to be painting mine with a black satin paint and I'm going to be doing two coats on this. Normally I stain my furniture but this time I wanted to do a nice sleek look with the black and I make sure I paint the top and the bottom of the boards and I even do the inside of the boards as well that way depending on if I just leave sheets on the bed you don't see any of the natural wood. Then once that dries, I will go in with um, my 220 grit sandpaper and just give it a good sand down, making sure it's nice and smooth. And then I will go in with a second coat. The next step is to add your uh, bed support slats and I usually add them anywhere from 6 to 8 inches. It's your preference what you want and then I will screw those down on each end including the middle that way they don't move but this is how the bed frame came out. I think it looks really nice. You can see how I've painted down in about an inch on the inside along with the headboard. I think it just looks really nice. You can add whatever type of mattress that you want without a box spring. I get mine off of Amazon which again I will have everything linked down in the description box below including all the cuts that you need for your wood and the headboard. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new because I absolutely love to inspire and motivate you here on my channel. And if you decide to make one of these, make sure to tag me on Instagram. That way I can repost it in my stories. And it cost me just under $120 to do the headboard and the bed frame. If you need any more DIY ideas, I will leave a playlist down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.